everybody this is John with Brothers Gun Reviews I uh, got another review for you today uh, but before I get into that I just want to thank you guys for stopping by again um, this is my fourth video and so far I've seemed to be getting pretty good feedback um, returned so all I can do is thank you for the support I'm seeing more comments and more subscribers so um, I'll keep the videos coming uh, now that I know that the uh, people seem to like what I'm putting out there I'll just keep them coming so without further ado I'll go ahead and get into this video uh, but first I think I have to roll the intro because I don't think I've done that yet just one sec Now that that's over with, today I brought to you, I'm bringing to you the um, Springfield XDS 3.3 and 45 ACP. So, this is the case. I want to go ahead and get this out of the way. Uh, it's actually a relatively small case compared to the other suitcases that you get from Springfield. Inside the case, you have the gun, obviously safety lock, magazine, grip extension, and magazine extension. Then up here, towards the top, you have everything that it always comes with. So, manual, I'll leave that out. Your spent brass casing, catalog, and some other literature and warnings and everything else. Don't be stupid, all that stuff. So, the gun. I'll go ahead and take this out of here. I'll give it a safety check. Everything looks good. Put that off the side for now. Take the magazine out. You also get these fiber optic front sights, which I'll go into a little later. You can get replacement pieces for those, which is cool. So, I will get this out of the way. And get onto the gun. My first thoughts. Wow. That sounded like I put it down pretty hard, but I swear I didn't. Uh, when you first pick up this gun, you'll probably notice the same thing I did. You know, for such a small gun, it's pretty heavy. The, um, it being a 45, I will suspect that has a lot to do with it. Somehow, they're probably going to want to put a little bit more weight in it to manage recoil. And then the power of the round, um, even though it doesn't have a lot of velocity, it's, it's still got a lot of energy. So they probably have to just make sure the thing is built built well and you know it'll stand the test of time um, the weight was the first thing I noticed second thing was the grip itself now I don't know if you guys seen the mod twos or whatever they were calling it now they have the grip zone this grip is actually I think better than the new ones that are coming out because it's very very textured so Especially, you know, slinging a big hunk of lead out of this, like a 45 ACP, you, you kind of want as much grip as you can possibly get because you really only get two fingers on there. It's it's a carry gun, that's what it's designed for, so it's not going to have a crazy long grip on it. So, for me, I want as much grip as possible when I'm firing this thing. So, um, the second thing I noticed is that it's got two different safeties on it. Um, it's got a trigger safety, you can see there. Just kind of like a Glock, and it's got a uh, a hand safety, uh, you know, which is something like a 1911. Um, some other features that I've noticed right off the bat is it had a fiber optic front sight, which you can kind of see there. Uh, maybe I'm not even gonna try. And then your regular white dot sight for the rear, so you can see there the sight picture is actually really nice, and um, you shouldn't have any problem losing that front sight. Now, in low light situations, I'm not sure how good it is because they are not night sights. So this, this sight is designed to pick up whatever light's around, but it can't be that great um, in the middle of the night or anything like that. So um, what else did I notice about it? Um, now with the, the extra mag, like I said, this, this comes with one mag and it's flush fit. So this is what you're going to get uh, in the box. The one thing that we sprung for was the extended mag, extra round. It's six rounds instead of five, and it's got this on the bottom. 
So what that's going to do is extend that grip just a little bit enough to get your pinky on it. Now I carry this as a backup mag. Um, you know, the, the shorter one being the primary mag, but this one comes in handy at the range because this gun, like I said, you know, it being a 45 and being so small, it's got a lot of recoil. So this, this helps you get that pinky on there and you know, normal people might be fine. My hands are huge, but, um, this helps me anyway to manage the recoil of the gun. So I like that. Um, Let's see, the specs I actually have written down this time, that way that, I know last time I didn't really have a good idea of anything. So, um, it's 6.3 inches long, 4 inches tall, and it weighs 21 and a half ounces. For comparison, I have a full size 1911 here, and you'll be able to see the difference in size. A lot of you have these, or are interested in them, so you kind of know how big they are. That's how big it is compared to a 1911. So it's not a great deal smaller, but it is it is small. Now this is the Sig P238, which let me safety check because I carry this in a lot. It's good, and that's the size of it. So it's even smaller. Um, now this gun will fit in a pocket holster. So this is the one I primarily use for my Sig, but um. It, I mean, it fits. So, you know, the trigger's covered up. You don't have to worry about anything like that. And if you have big enough pockets, this will fit in your pocket. So, um, you know, that's an option for you if that's what you want to do. So, that's the size of it. Um, 21 and a half ounces. Like I said, it, it's 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 kind of heavy. So, um, the um, it's a black polymer frame, as, you know, I probably mentioned before. Um, it's got a forged steel slide with a melanite finish. Uh, the finish itself is tough as nails. You know, it's hard to scratch. I mean, you've seen me accidentally drop this on the table and stuff, and it's it's a hard finish to scratch. So, you know, I think they did good there. It's got a 3.3 inch barrel, and that's also hammer forged, and it's got a 116 twist on the barrel. So, um, for those who needed to know that, um, that's there. Um, my personal experience with it, um, I took it to the range, and um, the first thing that I noticed was that, you know, my range is pretty dark, so the sight picture was excellent. I could really see what I was doing, and um, I love that about it. Now, getting on to firing it, um, the trigger itself seemed a little squishy for me. It's really smooth, but it's really difficult to tell when it's going to break, so... Um, you know, I'm used to single action triggers, but there are a lot of triggers out there, like the new Ruger American pistol, where I can tell when that thing's going to break. Um, Glocks, I can tell when they're going to break. This one, I have no idea. Um, it surprises me every single time. Which, you know, I think the whole purpose of this gun was to mash the trigger anyway, at whoever you have to shoot at. So it's not something that I'm going to be trying to place, get excellent shot placement at the range and stuff. But, um, you know, it's it's kind of smushy, and I never know when, when it's going to break. The reset itself isn't bad. That's the reset. So, um, I can't really complain there. You can probably get some shots off pretty quick with it. And rapid fire, I was able to get some shots off pretty quickly with it. So, um, the video that I'm going to put on here is of my brother shooting it. And I remember telling him, like, hey, you know, take your time. Get some nice shots, because... At the time, we only had like 5.45 rounds left. We had shot them all, and I forgot to shoot video of it. So you'll see him take his time with this video. And when you see that, you can see I'm joking. Um, bam, 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 bam. I'm really happy about that. So he did good there. Um, other than the trigger, the recoil is, is snappy as hell. Um, it's it's not pleasant to shoot, and I'm not going to shoot it all day. Um, you know, you got to practice with it if you want to carry it. But it's in in the 45 form. It it's got a really snappy trigger or a really snappy recoil. So um, be aware of that. If you're recoil sensitive, this one's got some. Um, the nine millimeter version might be better for you. And uh, 
other than that, you know, you know, it seems to be a pretty nice gun. You know, it's built well. Um, it, it says Springfield Army USA, but I'm pretty sure it's yeah, it's made in Croatia. <laughs> so, but other than that, you know, it's it's a good gun. Disassembly uh, is pretty straightforward, just like an XDM or XDM. Um, you lock the slide back, flip that up, pull the trigger, and it comes off. Pretty easy. And then this is all standard, like most semi-automatic guns are. Um, barrel slide, and it sims basically the same way. So, you know, it, it's it's not bad. Um, it's it's really easy to take apart and clean. So. And then you just lock the slide back again. The spring on it's really tense, but it is a 45, so and that's it. That's all there is to it. Pretty easy to do. Um, is it worth buying? It, if you have to have a 45, or if you like the feel of it, by all means, buy it. Um, the price tag MSRP is $579, which is too much. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's too much for it. Um, I know I can get Glocks cheaper. Um, I can get SIGs cheaper. Um, this SIG was four seventy nine, dollars and um, you know, I think I got it on sale for four thirty nine, dollars and it fits in my pocket better. But um, you know, if, if you have to have a forty five in small form, you know, look into it. I'm not sure what the Glock 30s are going for right now, but um, I'm assuming the size is pretty, pretty close to a Glock 30, and a Glock 30 is going to be a double stack deal. So um, for a single stack 45 five seventy nine, dollars I think is too much. Um, I have seen these for under four used, and I've seen a whole lot of them used. Um, I don't ever see any of the nine millimeters used, so that may tell you something in itself. Um, people might not be really liking these too much. Like I said, there's a lot of recoil, so um, you know, and it's it's just aggressive. You know, that's really the only way I can put it. It's it's aggressive. It's an aggressive gun. So if you got to have it, then it's worth buying. Um, but me personally, I think, um, you know, I'd be more interested in a 9mm version myself. It being a carry gun, um, recoil is the last thing that I want to be struggling with. And, um, you know, I just want to get shots off as fast as possible and not to worry about the gun bouncing out of my hand. So, um, but all in all, you know, it's a nice gun. Uh, I think Springfield did a good job with it. Um, I would prefer the 9mm version, but um, this is what I have. So this is what I'm going to deal with. Um, if you have any questions for me, let me know uh, once again, or if there's any uh, reviews that you want to see, I'll be happy to post those up. So I appreciate you guys for stopping by and have a special day.